Today we want to continue that prayer. Second Chronicles 7, 14 to 15. I'm Bishop Harry Jackson. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. One of the problems we have right now is we need to return to God with the heart and the head, with the heart in our hands. I have written a book that deals with what to do or God's answer to the race problem. And it's great to feel like you've got an answer, a solution, a recipe. But the reality is, unless we change our hearts, we become who we need to be, then there is really no solution to our problems. God is saying to many of us that we need to lay down our titles. I'm a bishop and a pastor and a leader. But when God listens to me and responds to me, he simply calls me son. The root of all sin is pride and independence. The turning from our wicked ways as we've gathered here has to do with us saying, God, I don't want to do it my way anymore. And I believe that what the Lord is doing in this season is he's allowed there to come four major problems on the horizon that need us to repent. First is COVID, which is like a plague of the Old Testament. Second, there's racial division, which is all about pride and our being arrogant in who we are. Third, there's the male-female problem, the Me Too movement that we have. There's a class problem. Fourth, all of these things are happening. And God is saying, if my church will just turn back to being the church, it's not, it's not in the church service format. It's not if it's live or on TV. It's if we will turn our hearts again to God. We're here to return in repentance. We're here to come back to that place where God no longer calls us bishop or apostle or pastor, but he calls us son. We're back to the place where we're responding to the love of God. And so I want to pray with you that we break that brittle heart that we come back to the Lord. Lord, I cry out for myself today. I repent pride, independence, arrogance. God, our whole nation, we're the richest nation in the earth. Lord, I believe you want to turn my heart towards you in a greater way and that you can reveal your love and life through me and my family in a greater way. Oh God, split the heavens, rend the heavens and change our hearts. Change my heart. Out of that heart change, touch my family and my church. Lord, I thank you that you're the God of all hope. You're the God of all grace. And I thank you. You will hear our cry as we turn, even in these little things, back to the true and the living God. A word from God. God wants to heal America's race problem and release us into a unity the like of which we've never seen. God bless you. Hallelujah. You know, friends, these are solemn moments for solemn times. I've been asked to share a specific word on repentance of leaders in the church. But it's a word for all of us. Zechariah 13, 1 in the Message Bible says, on, on the big day, a fountain will be opened for the family of David and all the leaders for washing away their sins, for scrubbing their stained and soiled lives clean. Today, September 26, 2020, I believe will we'll go down in history as a, a big day in Christ's kingdom. 
And may it be a day when leaders in the church would see, as Zechariah described, a scrubbing of our stained and soiled lives. You know, all true repentance begins with confession and contrition. Very early on in ministry, I wondered if repentance and con con confession were pretty much the same thing, but I remember the very moment I saw the difference. My wife and I started out in ministry more than five decades ago with youth during the Jesus movement. And uh, may God do that again, hallelujah. One night in a packed chapel of teenagers, a powerful wave of tearful confession swept over the entire group. And when the meeting drew to a close very, very late, I felt a need to explain the difference between confession and repentance. Suddenly, this explanation came. I told the young people, confession is just the beginning of what God wants to do in your life. Confession must lead to repentance. And then I said this, confession is what you do on the way down to your knees, and repentance is what you do on the way back up. In other words, confession is admitting my sin, repentance is quitting my sin. Years ago, my wife and I attended a national prayer celebration here in Washington when T.D. Jakes was the keynote speaker, and he spoke especially of the sin of leadership in the church, and he reduced his thoughts to a three-word admonition concerning sin. He said, admit it, quit it, and forget it. Now, I can't preach that like T.D. Jakes, but the theology is sound, and may I suggest that a good place to begin our repentance as leaders is to repent of our prayerlessness. Robert Murray McChain was a fiery Scottish preacher in the mid-1800s who often spent entire days in prayer. And McChain once told the church leaders, no amount of activity in the king's service will ever make up for the neglect of the king himself. Amen? Well, beloved leader, to repent of prayerlessness is to quit it. To quit it. Quit being prayerless. <laughs> Quit not praying, and quit not praying every day, hallelujah. And I would just encourage you, begin right now, begin right now, leaders, and this is a word to the whole church, to make a declaration from this day onward, I have an appointment with the king of the universe. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Father, we praise you. We praise you and we thank you, oh, holy God. We come to you today here on the mall in Washington, D.C. at the return. Father, we humble ourselves before you, oh, mighty God, oh, creator God of the universe. We humble ourselves, Father, because of our sin and our wicked ways. Oh, Father, we pour it out to you and ask for your grace, that you would cover us with your grace, cover us with your mercy. Lord, yet for a little while more, Father, we ask for more time here in the United States of America. We, re we deserve your judgment, Father, but we ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. O oh Lord, in your word, in Psalms 26, 12, it says, Now I stand on solid ground, and I will publicly praise the Lord. Great is the Lord. He is worthy of all our praise. Father, we enthrone you on high as we see you high and lifted up on your throne. We thank you, O oh Father, for your holiness. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for giving us your Son. We thank you, O oh Father, for the power of your Word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for filling us with the power, the peace, the presence of your Holy Spirit. Fill these grounds today with the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we focus on who you are, on what your character is, on your will for us, on our families, for the church, for the nation, Lord God, would you fill us with your unspeakable peace and with your presence. Oh, beloved, the Lord has not abandoned America. Perfect love casts out fear. We are on high places today. He has set us at a place of victory today that we pray from. 
And so we cast out fear. According to the Jewish calendar, we're presently in the 10 days of awe and reverence for God, beginning with the Feast of Trumpets and ending on Yom Kippur. These are the days of confessing our sins. The Jews believe these are the days of asking the Lord to write our names in his book of life for another year of life. Oh God, we ask that you would write the United States of America, our nation, in your book of life, that we might have life and not death. Oh Father, we pray that you would hear this prayer. Father, we thank you for Messiah. We thank you for Messiah who has given all for us and for this nation. You are mighty, you are powerful to save. Psalms 33, 20 through 22 says, we put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in your holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone.